Hey guys, what's up? All right, so what we want to do now, uh, we need to we need to make sure that you guys have uh, easy install set up on your uh, your Python your programming uh, operating system. So uh, you want to look up how to install easy install. So like easy install Python. And um, use this setup tools under pypy.org. Uh, there's an MSI down here for people using Windows. And it should be yeah, the Windows installer down here. So um, use setup tools. That way uh, you'll have the ability to install uh, certain uh, add ons and shit. So uh, here we go to our. Our uh, command prompt here. So if I said like easy install after I set up uh, set up that setup tools, like I just said, um, once you have it installed, you'll be able to do that, and you can say like uh, beautiful soup. I think that's one word. Don't remember. Um, but you'll see that it actually went out and it installed beautiful soup onto my um, my operating system. So now that my my Python programs can use this beautiful soup. Uh, programming module that was created. Uh, so Beautiful Soup is something that allows you to parse uh, HTML web pages pretty easily. So let's go ahead and uh, honestly I don't really use Beautiful Soup that often but let's go ahead and try to use this and see how we can apply it to our MySpace program that we just created. So we need to go ahead and import it and we'll say from Beautiful Soup import beautiful soup and then then we need to go ahead and build this shit all right so now that we have uh, beautiful soup imported into the top of the file uh, we can go ahead and just say soup equals beautiful so we're using this import that we just imported beautiful soup and then we'll say um, we feed it in the parentheses we're gonna feed it the our URL so if I know how to use uh, this I, I'm, I'm like I said I'm kinda new with it uh, let's go ahead and just say print soup dot title and if we save it and run it. Oh shit. Uh, we need to run our program. So we'll say, what do we call this thing? Grab web page. Grab web page.py. So you'll see that um, it only printed out the title because that's all that we asked for. So it's pretty cool. So um, if we just want the text, like you see that it actually grabbed the HTML container title, title. Um, so if we just want the text, we can just say text. So it's pretty cool. So um, you can see that we grabbed it. Now, since we're going into scraping web pages, we really need to go and touch base on uh, logical operators, which just means if or else. Um, so you evaluate something whether or not it's either true or false. I mean everything in programming is either true or false essentially. So we can let's assign this soup title text a variable. We'll say title equals soup dot title dot text. So we know that that equals MySpace right now. So say that I was building some sort of automatic scraper and I, I want to verify that I'm in the right web space. And it, like if I have a spider unleashed onto the web and it's going out and grabbing a bunch of different pages and I, I want to make sure that I have the right thing I need to do like a logical operator so we'll do just something relatively simple we're gonna say if title if um and let's give it a string to see if it's in there if myspace in title print yes we are in a myspace page. MySpace may be capitalized because this is going to be um, uh, basically it's it, it's capital sensitive so 
If MySpace is capitalized, which it probably is, then I think this is going to fail, but let's just try it real quick. So it obviously failed because it didn't do shit. So um, you always want to do like an, an else statement. You don't always have to, but in this case, let's do an else. And we'll say print your shit did not work. So that way we know that if it does nothing, it's printing your shit did not work. So we know it didn't work. So the reason why is, like I said, this is most likely a capitalization issue. MySpace is capitalized because it's a title, it's a name, it's a company. Yes, we are in a MySpace page. So since we have a simple if else, I mean, you can just do additional stuff. So, I mean, we'll say, uh, we'll say body equals soup dot. Is there a body character? Soup dot body maybe dot text. I don't know. We'll just say, let's just do that and see if it does this. I, I don't know what it's gonna do. No, it doesn't do anything. Oh, that's because we only assigned it. So let's just say print body. Since we're now in this if space of programming because it's evaluated to true, so it's just going to follow everything in here. And if it was false, it would just do here and kill the program. So hopefully this prints the body if body even finds anything. So it doesn't even find anything. Um, can't encode character. Uh, what that means is that um, we're using ASCII, and this is some sort of Unicode character that the print uh, doesn't understand. So we can actually say body equals body dot encode uh, ASCII ignore, I think. Known ASCII. Shoot, I don't remember. I'll have to look that up. Um, one second. I'm going to look this up because when you run into that situation, it's actually, you know what? Fuck it. Um, we're going to go ahead and just print this out to a file because what, what it. You can, um, and you can look this up. Sorry, I don't know it off the top of my head, but when you run into that situation, you can essentially say body ignore. Um, you know, these un, un, uh, unknown characters that it's not able to print out on the command prompt. But right now, we're not going to worry about that. It's a simple issue because uh, all that was doing was trying to print, saying, hey, I can't print, but it was breaking. So we can actually write it out to an out file. And let's just go ahead and do that. Out file equals open, uh, or op um, open, and then in the parentheses, we'll say, uh, projects, training, and then let's name it, we'll name it MySpace body.txt, and then write it. And we've done this in the previous tutorials, and then we'll say outfile.write. Um, let's say outfile.write, uh, and then we'll say body, because we're out, outputting this body soup body.txt. So let's print that, run this. Oh, we're still trying to print it, I believe. Son of a bitch, son of a bitch. All right, so let me, let me look this up real quick because this is not even going to let us output a file because of this stupid ASCII codec error. And we'll explain how to resolve that here in just one second. Yeah, I was actually on the right path with this um, encode thing. So we can say uh, body equals body.encode. And then we say ASCII. So we're saying encode it to ASCII and then ignore any problems that you have in trying to code it. So, so when we ran this, it actually worked this time. So that's actually an, an ugly way of fixing the error. Um, UTF-8 can be a complicated subject, but a lot of things are written in UTF-8, which is like cross-language uh, encoding. 
normally when the programming was invented and everything, it was written for the American uh, English language. Uh, so everything was written in like this ASCII, but there's so many different languages uh, that UTF-8 is now like the common um, output. But like you see that uh, there were code, there were certain characters in the UTF-8 coding uh, that weren't understand, uh, that couldn't be understood by some of these older Python libraries. Um, so it's a complicated subject that I don't even know enough about because, you know, I'm still somewhat of a beginner. But, uh, you know, for right now, just don't even worry about it. Uh, you can do body, body dot and code. Do you really need that character? Probably not. So, um, you know, that this fixes that shit. So let's go ahead and open this. And then we see MySpace body here. And you see that it just printed out all the text. I mean, none of this stuff is like, makes any sense because we just took all of the text and just printed it out so it's really not that helpful uh, but I just wanted to show you that you can request different things like um, we could have done instead of this same body we could just say soup dot we could say soup dot find all and then p so what we're saying is find all p tags so body is now when we run this it's going to overwrite all that trash that we had uh, soup dot find all so it's saying no p so we're going to take out this encoding thing here All right, so this is a common thing too. You're going to see soup.findall is going to find all p tags, which are HTML paragraph tags, and it's going to create a list of them. So body is a list. So like, if you look at this, we're going to, we could say we could do a for loop on this, like we've done before. We could say like for i n body print, and then you're going to want to say print string i because um, it's just a. You can see that it printed each one of these. Uh, p tags that it found here. So p class, password, blah, blah, blah. So I printed those things. Um, you can even do print um, i dot text. So instead of having the p characters in there, it just prints the text that is found. So that's always helpful. So um, anyway, it's a list. So if you wanted to output that to a file, um, you need to say uh, for i and body, and you're going to say out file dot write and you're gonna say string i and we can even say dot uh, text or you know what you don't even have to put a string there I'm sorry uh, you can just say i dot text because i dot text is a string and not a list item so when we do this you can see that myspace body has now been written these things now it's some sloppy looking shit because we didn't put any new line characters in there and this is a good time to touch on that. If you want to do that, you want to go ahead and say i.txt and let's say plus, which is a concatenation meaning add on an additional string here. And to put a new line, um, like a return statement between each list item, just say forward slash n. That's actually backslash, my bad. Uh, backslash n, which is it means it means new line character. So when we run this again, you'll see that our file now has you know properly formatted lines for each p tag that we found so i'm gonna go ahead and uh, kill this tutorial now hopefully it makes some sense you really gotta play around with beautiful soup and outputting files in the way that you want and in a way that makes sense to you so let's go ahead and kill this and in the next tutorial we're gonna go ahead and parse a different page uh, we'll go after a wikipedia page and uh, try to print something that makes a little bit more sense than this MySpace page.